Hi guys and welcome to my latest video. This is going to be a much more upbeat and positive video compared to the last one um, because I'm going to go through a few of my more recent sales, more interesting recent sales I should say. Um, hopefully things are starting to pick up um, for you guys um, as we approach Christmas. Um, but even if they're not, just remember to stay positive like I'm remembering to stay positive. Um, and you know, in the end, enough hard work, enough listings out there will make the difference. Um, anyway, I'm going to get onto some of the items I've sold um, and for how much so you guys can get an idea of what to look out for and what to list items for. Um, first item I want to talk about is the Nintendo DS uh, Coral Pink and um, I've bundled it with two games which aren't very popular in their own which is Guitar Hero and the Brain Training game um, and I got £30 for it which is pretty good for a Nintendo DS I don't think I would have paid more than a fiver for that from the from the boot fair so pretty good deal for the regular old DS now considering there are so many variations since now um, and so that's a pretty good sale for me Next item up that I want to show you guys. Now this is an interesting one. It's a plain River Island purse. Now what's interesting about it is not necessarily the sale price because it's only £9 I got. I could have probably asked for a bit more but £9 seemed to be a good going rate. After fees and everything I'm going to be left with about a fiver um, because obviously free postage eBay, PayPal, etc, etc. But what's interesting about this is these kinds of items are readily available at boot fairs for very cheap. So if you start the next season and you just start hauling these in, um, they're going to be quick sellers. I mean, this sold very quickly for me. I was surprised at how quickly it went. And um, so that's definitely something to keep an eye out on, a plain River Island envelope purse. Next item, something I sell quite regularly, um, did pretty well on this one because this is not a particularly popular um, CD Walkman, this is a Sony Disman D300. You tend to get better money when you've got the higher end um, walk, um, CD players, like the ones which are like super slim and with lots of anti-shock and fancy displays and things like that. This is a bit more of an older model so maybe it sold because of its kind of more... I wouldn't say vintage value, but still, it's only got 10 seconds of anti-shock. Um, but someone bought it, and they bought it for £20, which is fantastic. I don't think I would have paid more than about £2 for that at the, at the boot fair, so that's a nice sale. N next item... Ooh, okay, cool. Um, next item I've got is the Nintendo Game Boy, um, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't think I paid more than three pounds for this which is fantastic and um i actually had this acrylic case from a previous game boy that i bought um and i just bundled it up with tetris and the and the manual and it sold for 28 pounds which is pretty damn good um for a regular game boy um it's in decent condition um you know but the, it did have a little stain that i couldn't get rid of near the directional pad so i couldn't ask for more but still 28 pounds is pretty good um, considering what I paid for it. Next up is another brand that you should definitely keep your eyes out for. It's called Merrill. Um, Merrill brand shoes or Morel, I don't know. They're, they're, I, I call it Merrill. Um, I put I spelt it with three R's as well. I don't know if you guys can see that. I just noticed that I spelt it with three R's. No wonder it took so long to sell. Uh, some a mistake on my part. Um, these I would have expected to sell a lot quick and 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 with one L. And the continuum, I'm not sure if that's right either, but well, that's a real, um, that's an eye opener. Normally I'm pretty good with my titles and spellings, but obviously in this case I have dropped the ball in a big way. And that would probably explain um, how surprisingly long it took to sell. Now these shoes are very popular, Merrill Continuums. I didn't really give them a good clean, as you can see they're in a bit of a filthy state there. But I was unable to really get that out, which is a bit of a shame. But these, are, and they probably look worse in the photos than they do um, in real life, but, well, maybe they don't. Um, they were quite used, but they've still got a lot of life left in the tread, um, as you can see at the bottom there. I always take a picture of the, the, the bottom of the shoes, just to give people an idea of, of how much life they've got left in the shoes. But yeah, um, I sold these for £25, um, which is pretty good. Um, I could have gotten a lot more if they were cleaner, and if I'd spelt the title correctly, I reckon they would have probably sold a lot quicker, and probably for a bit more money. Um, but I paid a fiver for those, so for from 5 to 25, I'm still happy with that. Um, next item, now this is a really nice one. 
Um, this is a Jack specific wrestling figure. Normally I recommend picking up Mattel figures, but there are certain exceptions. Jack's figures on their own can bring in money when they're certain ones. Um, I don't know 100%. It's a matter of research because there's so many variations of wrestling figures. Um, you might find that the version of a wrestler you have is not popular, but if you had a different version of the same wrestler, it would be worth more money. Um, it tends to happen a lot. But this is a 2003 dated Jack's Ultimate Warrior. Warrior. Now it may have something to do with the passing of the Ultimate Warrior um, in the last few years, I can't remember, but he has now left this mortal coil. But, but as you can see, he's got a really cool legacy in this action figure. Absolutely stunning action figure there for any wrestling fan um, from the 80s, 90s. Um, but anyway... He went for £15, which is fantastic. I think I would have paid about 50p, maybe a pound for him. So £15, pretty good flip. Next item, um, pretty nice coat. This is a Marks & Spencer's cashmere long coat, wool and cashmere blend in double XL size. I let this go pretty cheap, to be honest. I, I, uh, I asked for £30. Um, I got £30. It's a pretty difficult coat to photograph because it is just black. Um, you know, and I think I may have undersold it by mentioning a few marks and stains, um, but I, I always err on the side of caution. Um, this coat new would have been well over £100, £150 in Marks and Spencer, so whoever got that got an absolute bargain. But it had been lying around from, for me for ages, taking up room, and I'd already made profit on the job lot of um, coats that it came in when I bought it from auction a long time ago. Next up is another wallet. Now this is a Galunsky's uh, Galunsky ladies purse. Um, again, very surprising because of it's a plain purse. It's a normal envelope purse. It's got coloured leather on the inside, multicoloured inside, pink stitching. Pretty nice, but nothing spectacular. And um, it sold very quickly for ten pounds. So. These kinds of purses aren't going to command a lot of money. Obviously, if you go to the boot fair and someone's trying to sell a designer purse, they might ask for £5, £10, whatever. But normally, when it's River Island or Next or whatever, they're not going to ask you more than a pound or £2. And if you can knock them out very quickly at 10 maybe even more, I've been selling them at like a 10 or each, they're still worth picking up for a nice simple sale just to kind of keep things ticking over. Um, next item is something that I've talked about a lot. This is a VCR um, I was actually, this is kind of a funny one, so Sony um, SLV SE820 VCR, when I bought this it was neatly boxed up with the inserts and on initial inspection at the booth I thought I'd hit the jackpot because a brand new seal VCR can command two, three hundred pounds nowadays because obviously of the rarity, however I took the risk of opening it even though it looked like it had been just never opened and it turns out that there were marks on the VCR, the remote control had yellowing, there was no manual, so it was a very used VCR, but it did come with the original box and inserts. Um, anyway, it sold for £40, and I'm um, pretty happy with that. I paid, I think, £8 for this, so I paid m way more than I normally would have done normally with VCRs. It tops out at around £5 at boot fairs. Most people don't tend to ask more than the fiver um, because to be honest with you most people don't want VCRs and lugging them around etc so you know it was more than I would have liked to have paid but because it looked brand new boxed um, and you know I took the risk and got stung but didn't really because I still sold it for 40 quid um, next item this is actually a charity shop pickup I think I picked this up for two pounds sold it for 11 um, not major profit again but still nice little gift it's a Burns crystal dram glass with a highland cow etched onto it handcrafted in Scotland lovely little item it's probably going to be someone's uh, little kind of stocking filler type gift um, and I'm good on them next up is something I've been sitting on for a while this is a Marvel Legends Rhino figure He's about six inches tall from Toy Biz in 2001. Um, I would have bought him as a bundle of action figures, probably maybe paid a pound tops for him, two pounds maybe, tops, tops, tops. But, you know, sold it for a tenner. I think it wouldn't have been two. It would have been about a pound or 50p, to be honest. Um, but still, nice sell there. Next up, another VCR. This time it's a Panasonic. Good condition with remote and manual, £40. I think I would have paid again a fiver for this, I think, um, which was... Which is like the standard kind of rate what some people ask for a decent VCR. Next item. 
Um, and my final item, um, something interesting. It's a Disney, a set of Disney movers from Disney Monopoly movers, little, uh, you know, tokens as they are. Um, I sold it for £10, which is fantastic. So um, I think it was, it came out of a box of Disney Monopoly, which had too many parts missing for me to bother with. Um, if the board's ripped or if they're missing too many cards and things, I don't have the space or the tolerance to really store lots of things um so what i tend to do is just part them out now and it seems to be working well uh, especially at this time of year i mean that's gone for a tenner so i'm pretty happy with that so i mean those are my sales um for the for the uh, week um well not week for the last couple of weeks maybe some more some more of my interesting sales and some things that i've noticed that maybe was kind of holding me back previously that could have avoided my kind of um, getting down and feeling oh god nothing is selling it's something that joe chris pine mentioned in his last video where he talked about if you've got your pricing right and your photos are good your description is good you there's nothing more you can do and you know things will sell and you've got nothing to worry about and i think i was okay on most of those i'm pretty sure my photos are good uh, my my descriptions and listings are mostly accurate and they're quite basic but they're accurate and they do the job just fine but I think where I was shooting myself in the foot was my pricing um, I've noticed that um, maybe on a lot of my items I was asking that little bit too much and I thought just because I had like buy it now or best offer on them that even though I was overpriced people will offer it's not necessarily the case. Sometimes an initially high price will put people off even putting an offer in. Um, and I've noticed that since bringing my pricing down, I, I went through a lot of my listings the other day and I just started to reduce them down to, to like, I had a look at what items were selling for and just reduce them down a little bit to maybe a more realistic level. Um, and it, sometimes the difference was only a couple of quid. Um, but it makes the difference in getting the sale it makes the difference between sitting on an item for absolutely ages so for example those vcrs i've been sat on those for a long time um, um because i was asking like 50 60 pounds for them i'm sure it at some point they would have sold for 50 60 pounds and maybe if i had an inventory of about a thousand items I could have afforded to have just let them sit there until someone paid me 50 or 60 because hopefully my turnover would still be coming in because of my vast inventory. But when I, when you've only got like 200 and something odd items, um, you can't guarantee that you're going to get a lot of sales all the time. You know, you, you have to be realistic. Um, so it kind of made sense for me to drop the price. And as soon as I dropped them down to 40 pounds, both of them went within the same weekend. Um, and that was a bit of an eye opener, and uh, the same thing applied to to, to the, some of the, to like the action figure there that I had the Rhino action figure that I sold for a tenner. Um, I've I'd, I'd had him up for maybe like fourteen, fifteen pounds for a long, 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 long time. And and you have to think about it that you know is it worth you waiting out for that extra couple of quid? And in most cases, it probably isn't. Um, and in my case, I've got to say that getting the sales going is making me feel a lot better. I think pricing realistically is very important just because someone has achieved this high price um doesn't mean you can't but if you do go for that then you've got to be realistic and expect to wait um and therefore you've got to have a big enough inventory uh to cover yourself whilst you're waiting for that so um that's my kind of, kind of little tip at the end of this video that you know just uh, keep an eye out on, on how you're pricing your items um, because I kind of let slip and I started to maybe get too greedy and expect to get that little bit more and more um, and it kind of stifled my sales. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you've got any comments, please leave them in the comment section. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, a thumbs down if you disliked it. Um, it's all welcome and I will ho hopefully see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.